Welcome to podcast This Escape, the podcast where we talk about the escape room we escaped from in the previous episode of this podcast. <laughs> it's extra funny that you've both done that because I referenced Frankenstein in no, my notes. Oh, it's an energy <laughs> vampire. He's I giving still, someone else energy no, is kind of a Frankenstein I suck thing. I the energy too. from the young and I take it into my body. You have opened my tomb and feel my curse. <laughs> I'm oh, it's a mummy! Everybody run! <laughs> oh no! If He's I just drink to... this potion, it'll mean that I'm not as sinful anymore. Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's real life Jason Statham. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact about Jason Statham. He's, He's, Jekyll, He's been Jekyll and hiding his entire career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, uh, congratulations, Pat and Barry. Welcome back to the show to say... You did it. You yes. Thank you so much. You did a bunch of high school chemistry homework. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Stuff I haven't thought about in years. Yes, <laughs> we went several hours over time. <laughs> and you uncovered an energy vampire in yep. the school trying to steal energy from, from students, hence the bit. Anybody who's listening to this who didn't listen to last episode, you're listening Interesting. wrong. Yeah, it's a strange yeah. way to this listen. This is the discussion of the last episode. <laughs> Go back to that one. But yeah, just a four-episode mini-arc. There's no twist in the no, uh, just vampire. in the uh, penultimate episode. We just straight up get to know what's going on. Uh, well, you guys did really, really well. It was lovely to get you through it. I was incredibly impressed with not only your ability to get through and solve all of these chemical equations, but I enjoyed listening to you do it the entire time. It was so much fun. How did you feel? Do you feel good? Do you feel accomplished? I I think I solved one and that gave me the confidence to sit back and <laughs> let Pat's and I was like, well, I know how I to think do so. I was getting lost in the sauce. I needed you to. <laughs> also, your note-taking thing was perfect because oh, yeah. I was like, I have no idea which of these equations are the balanced ones or the finished ones. And I, I could- I could at least yeah. try to take notes of our crazy thought patterns, but uh, they do end up just as a pile of, um, I'm going to leave these on my work desk. <laughs> 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 Stick them up onto the yeah. whiteboard and have That's... someone try to figure out what you're up to. Oh, what are they recording in here? <laughs> Back to science on the yeah. weekends? Uh, no, you, you both didn't really look like, Pat, you you smashed through uh, those, those equations. It, I'd forgotten... I, it had been a while since doing that kind of, but I must have, as we were doing it, I was like, oh, God, I remember doing this in year nine. I think this is the exact reason why I didn't do chemistry and I did biology instead. But now you're yeah. great at it. Well, well turns out adults are smarter than kids. Yeah, but if it was biology stuff, like, oh, what, you know, that happens if you shake it a kid or something, that would have been way more enjoyable. That was the kind of stuff that we did in my high school. I don't know about you guys. I know that this was flew over my head because in my year 10 science, when we would have maybe done something like this, uh, my teacher had, was the same teacher that taught my dad at the school and mm. he started the year by seeing my last name Walsh and then putting two and two together and then was like are you Rodney Walsh's son and I said yes and he said I never liked your father and I, <laughs> and I don't think I'm gonna get along with you well, and yeah, I was not like that's your introduction I think this is a you problem teacher. Yeah. <laughs> which reminds me of a time uh, at the end of my in year 12 when we were having the kind of end of like we had all done the HSC and everything and we were at an event with the, all the other students and, and the teachers that taught us. Mm. I remember our history teacher, Miss, uh, uh, well, I won't name her, um, <laughs> came up to me uh, uh, quite drunk uh, and she went, oh, Patrick, you, I remember I taught your brother, you know, and he was such a great student. Why didn't I like you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so no, to be I'll, clear, tell, I'll to tell be, you who that was, To be Bill. clear, which brother? That was Bill. That was, oh, I'll tell you who it is off the mic, even mm. though just by pure arithmetic, she is almost certainly passed on from this world because <laughs> that was uh, now almost 10 years ago and uh, she was an elderly woman. Mm. Shout um, out. Well, no, look, I, it, was, it was really lovely. But there were other elements to this room as well because most of it was homework. Uh, and <laughs> like, and I, I expressed this during the playtest. Now, one thing that I think worked so much better for you is that in the playtest, I found one sheet of paper and it had all of the equations. Oh. But then you didn't fi- find the how to balance equations uh, until very until, late. So I didn't find how to balance uh. it. And, then, and it also had at the bottom of the balance equations, it, it automatically wheel. had the wheel as well. So <laughs> I had 10 equations that I did nothing with. And then I was told, solve all 10 equations right now and then put them into a ring. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, so to be fair, I already knew it going into the play test that it, didn't, it wasn't going to be structured like that in the final product, and that yes, was a bad idea to have it that issue. way. And so, so that, was, that was like, oh, my daunting. But I think by ripping it up into pairs yeah. and mm. sprinkling mm. it around the room, 
I thought and that made it work really well. Typically, those pairs tended to be one easy, one hard. Yeah, yeah. and so, and it was nice. That, um, it's like those were ripped around, but then there was also the added like. There's always another element of like, oh, and then you've got to get the gold, the bar or something, mm, right? Mm, so yeah, that was uh, it was fun to then put it into I, practice. My the highlight for me was the the whiteboard getting rubbed out. I, yeah, so oh, I hope so. Yeah, it reminded me of those pranks where you you draw something, you draw a cat <laughs> on the whiteboard, but only the part of it that makes it look like a penis is written with a, a permanent marker so yeah. that when the teacher rubs it out, it is revealed to in fact be. I, wow, penis. that's actually, I've never did that. It's high level stuff. Well, yeah. yeah, like that is an idea. And I think people have mentioned that to us as well as like something they'd like to do in a or they'd like to see in a room. I think someone's emailed us once to be like, I'd love for you to use a whiteboard that you erase part of the stuff on the whiteboard. I'm never going to finish this room, but you should use it. Um, but it is such a nice idea because like, it's, it's a classic uh, sort of, puzzle or, or mm. classic trick, right? Like, And we've seen it in a real escape room. We've done room. it in real really? escape rooms. Mm. That's cool. Um, but I just really like that because we're doing this in person rather than over the internet, that Danny could give you uh, like a procreate drawing with different yeah. layers so that you can great. literally that run was out amazing. the top yeah. layer and do it yourself. Sucked um, in for the listeners. You didn't get to do it. Sorry, we we got to do it. you just it saw fun. the finished product. We yeah. should have gotten the phone out and filmed a TikTok of us rubbing <laughs> out. <laughs> we should. Um, but yeah, look, I... I think it's a really fun room. Danny, you basically made this with the intent to make it almost like an education I want to be able to sell this to schools for big profits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to make their kids learn That's why you were equations. twiddling your moustache and rubbing your hands together while we were... I think your eyes became dollar yeah, signs for a say, moment. And, and they haven't stopped being dollar signs yet. Also, <laughs> oh, you tied that woman to a rail track, which doesn't seem on... Uh, on that was on, just for fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I, I really enjoyed doing it, uh, mm. and I'm glad... Did you enjoy doing it? Like, did yeah, it really yeah like for it sure. Was, I also thought another thing that impressed me was that the um, states of matter um, uh, clue to get us mm. into the room had us thinking about the colours of words. Mm. So then yeah. when we got to the, the the dip test, flame test thing, I was You're we were right already there. primed to be like, oh, this isn't a decorative thing. Yeah. These colours will uh, affix to something. I'm so glad. And it's It's one of those things that when it comes to... Flame tests especially. I talk about them a lot. And the, even though you haven't done them, you have done chemistry before. And so trying to give the appropriate amount of diagram cluing for people who may not have ever seen them before for sure. yeah, and what yeah. worked, and you nailed it. Yeah, I, I had never seen – I had never done those before. No, so I was not really aware of what a, what a flame it test is, was. Yeah, literally mm. a solution say- and you dip – like a metal loop or something, wooden or something, mm. uh, hold over the flame and depending on the metal ions, change the colour of the flame. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. And just the the whole flame test dip, it's like even if you don't know what a flame test is, it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, you you dip, dip something and then you flame. test it on the flame. Uh, yeah. it's, it was the right level of like um, <laughs> the science like, and balancing of things where I, it didn't feel overwhelming. Like, And then I'm realising as I say that, it's like it's year 10 science. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not you, meant to be you, overwhelming You just for finished year 10 to 12 science there in various go. units. So <laughs> good job. <laughs> Mm. It's Take also that. nice, like you can do stuff like that in in the audio in terms of, like the flame test. Yeah, is like as long as you tell someone like enough steps that they could say sort of, well, I guess I just do this. Like, yeah. well, I guess I dip it and then I put it in the flame. Like that's yeah. much easier in audio because you just you know you get the steps. Fair, that's exactly the steps in real oh, life yeah. as well. But yeah. if you were in a real escape room, you gave someone some steps to do, they'd be like, no, I have to get it precise, or they might be holding it to the wrong place, or they might do it yeah. too yes. much or yeah, too little. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. So you can't kind of do that in a physical escape room. It's nice to do it in audio. You can just be like, Could I you do just it right. have a Bunsen burner going off in a, yeah, in a yeah, physical yeah. player? Probably not. <laughs> so it's nice to play with the, those things. Even in a mundane setting like this, like people often think, oh, it's audio. So you can do a room where you're riding on a dragon. And it's like, yeah, you can, but you can also do interesting stuff that you can't do as normally in a mundane setting. Plus, yes. if you were in an escape room on the back of a dragon, the escape is to just jump off the dragon. Mm-hmm. That is, oh, like, no, yeah. it catches you with its claws oh, every time. And, yeah. Yeah. and it puts you right back up right and back. says, I'll only let you fall if you answer my riddles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. this is like a luck dragon. This is a... <laughs> ooh, 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 you know. um, and, and yeah, and, and the, 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 always, the, the trouble with the physical escape room is... Uh, and not, not you know, the very high quality ones with they've put the stuff together very well. But sometimes in an escape room, you'll have like, oh no, you solved this thing right, but you didn't like the the lock didn't quite jig in the yes. right way. Oh you yeah. Know? So you just go like, oh, I can feel it kind of moving. Am I just doing this wrong, or am I, you know? So that yeah. So me. in a situation like this, where it's very, t- as you say, mm, you're finicky. not gonna dip it too much or undip it or run out of sticks or not hold yeah. it to the flame the right way. Even the the magnet thing, like I wouldn't yes. imagine if I couldn't get the magnet to yeah. work. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Or like, yeah. yeah, like we can do a mould that you have to fill and, and not then be like, wait, I moulded it, but I made it just a little bit too short. It's that too was thick. I have to redo the mould. Can I just say in addition, uh, this the one bit of science that I'm pretty sure does not exist is this metal separating yeah. oh, yeah. extractor yeah. machine. Yeah. I'm pretty sure know. that one's magic. That's, I have no idea how to get pure, metal straight out of the solution without massive 
engineering equipment. Yeah. And science is magic sometimes. Yeah. Science mm. is magic. One thing that I thought, just a very small one that I didn't have in my notes, it wasn't a pre-planned thing, mm. uh, that you got all those numbers from the equations at the end and you knew that you were looking for a password. Yeah. And you could have just typed all of those numbers in, but that wouldn't have worked, but you didn't. Because, Barry, you ask how many, how many characters will the password allow? Yeah. And so 10 means you can't do yes. all of those digits. Yeah. That was yeah. actually really lovely. That should be a written clue because yeah. it was just like, great, now stop thinking about the numbers. You you have to think about what can yeah. the numbers be. And it, it was interesting really well. the yeah. equation so thing question. with the arrows because it was almost like, which I didn't get until you asked me what do those arrows mean. And just as I was <laughs> starting the sentence to say I don't know, by the time I finished that sentence I said I don't know, but I think it's the, <laughs> either side of the equation. But the interesting thing about that is that in that sense, it's, it's almost like, like what else why would saying? arrows point left or right <laughs> yeah. when it wouldn't? They're balanced, anyways. Yeah, mm. but in but oh, in the sense, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, see, because, this is yeah. the one. This was the one thing that I had an issue with. with but it, some right? of them were left, and some of them yeah, were right. It, but mm. left and right will intrinsically always be the yep. same. So that made me go, wait, well, maybe something else is happening here. Maybe I have to right. push things left or push the, yeah. purely on that basis. That like the idea that it's like both sides, one side is is reasonable. But I got confused over. The left and the right are kind of arbitrary. Throw, like. I think you got it. Like yeah. it obviously I also makes sense. think a little bit there was if it was left all the time, one, that might look a little bit weird. But mm. two, you might end up that might help you with some of the double ones. Like if you hadn't realized right away, oh, obviously it's gonna be the same on both sides. Yeah. I'll just yeah. double them. What I will say is that the left and right in both directions did make me think like I I I spent the whole room looking at arrows pointing. So True. the the left and right made me think, oh, left and right, and oh, I've just been balancing left and right of equation. Oh, it must be the both the sides. That of is equation. true. Yeah. So in that sense, because if they're all pointing left, I'd be like, oh, it's anti clockwise. Sort of, you know, no, what I mean? yeah, like, yeah. I'd be mean, looking at the order of the letters. So I think or, I think you do. It, I think it is the best version. There you that go, you've got. Bill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we proved you wrong. Well, that's, that's, that's what, the what we aim to do. That's what yeah. the show is about. Yeah. Uh, isn't it yeah. nice to just accept it sometimes? <laughs> it is. Pr- it run is. this bill cast more like. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One other uh, fun fact about this one was mm. that I specifically, we wanted to get you two on for our room, and I specifically mm. nominated you for this room, even like before we had settled our guests for room one. I wanted you for this one. And look, in some small part, because a lot of our other guests, I don't know what their chemistry backgrounds are, if any, yeah. and I don't want to take chances. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, if it turned out to be a lot of unfun homework, I figured I could inflict that upon you more easily. <laughs> Than anyone else. Well, you knew that we were going to be good at the task because people always say when they listen to Wolf Wonders that the one thing that we have is great chemistry. So. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that we're really smart. No, I was like, <laughs> no they don't say that at all. Say, uh, whenever people listen to Wolf Wonders, they say, could you please not have all those bubbling beakers in the background because it sounds like the first few bars of the Monster Mash and I can't hear what you're saying. And then you correct them and tell them it's the Teppanyaki Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. excuse it's me. It's the Teppanyaki guy. Yeah. We and, want eggs. And Mr. Yoshi is there making yes, the yes, Teppanyaki. Yes, we have uh, <laughs> we have done uh, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's on our podcast, and we did grapple with it was the very shameful legacy of Mr. Yuri Yoshi. <laughs> yeah. Which I didn't know about until watching it. So. Yes, well, and, that's, and if there's any a better advertisement we can give to our podcast, it's that. <laughs> we grapple with the missteps of Hollywood of yesteryear. Uh, but no, look, I, I, I really enjoyed listening to you guys get through this room, and, and I'm so glad we got you to do this one because you be. were, were very clear and understandable when you were solving the puzzles. Mm. Like there wasn't sometimes when sometimes it's a risk when you have people on the show that like we're doing puzzles and sometimes people can get really in their own heads yeah. and uh and make it while it's perfectly good for them and they and they and they get a good solution, mm. they sort of have to shut down into themselves. And it becomes a little tough sometimes to to edit through. So uh for me, like I say, man, this made my job really easy because it was very clear what you're doing the whole time. Um so it was great. Like you worked very well for this set of puzzles. Well, uh, yeah. What what I will say is that is that being encouraged to read out your thinking as you go does help a lot because if I'm if I'm just looking at this thing, I'm thinking in my mind, oh god, you, why is this taking me so long? Why is this taking <laughs> me so horribly long to right. think this through? But if I'm like, well, I have to move at a snail's pace because I'm really out of the list. <laughs> Five isn't going into three, <laughs> so we'll need to multiply both by each other. Like you know, having numbers is even now. Even for people playing along at home, is when a number is divisible by two. Here's 40 examples. <laughs> two, <laughs> four, six, eight, ten. 
Uh, it, it helps yeah. having both of us here, I think, as well, because while Pat would be like reading it out slowly, I'm like writing the notes to keep it like. Yeah, mm. honestly, it was really great to have yeah. your like, uh, you know, slightly uh, uh, deranged uh, <laughs> set of notes, but it was it was super helpful at the end because I was like, I don't know, where's number eight? And you're like, buddy. See, yeah, everyone it thinks it looks chaotic and unhinged, and then and then everyone's pleased when I can lay them all out. And it was uh, perfect, yeah. and it would perfectly match the thing because we had the two equations per piece of paper, yeah. and you had your two equations per post note, that's so you'd right. be like, I oh, know, here's seven and eight, you know. Yeah, mm, that was how. I, that's what I thought. And, uh, and, and I'm so glad that Danny that we re- that the room got rearranged that because that was so much yeah. more dynamic at the end. It was so interesting to be like, now we've got all our solutions. We've earned this. We've worked yeah. hard. It Here's definitely felt like a, we'd earned it. Yeah. yeah. Now, can I ask a behind the scenes question? Yes. How much money did Konami pay you to put cow in the uh, in the in the equation? Well, you know, they offered us uh, ten thousand, but they only gave yeah. us five thousand because they wanted cow cow, uh, and we had to show them getting the cow. Yeah. Uh, there's a hidden blue boo yeah, in there. Yeah, there's yeah. a clan you hiding in the corner. <laughs> that you can find a little Easter egg. You should you should put um, it up here to be like you know, uh, uh, you know uh, to get to the canteen you have to cross the Hulao Gate and uh, Lou Boo's guarding, Lu Bu's guarding the gate. Lu Luckily, Bu's you have. 10,000 men. There's no way Lou Boo could defeat 10,000 <laughs> oh, <no>. men. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, this is some yes. romance of three kingdoms uh, <laughs> references shout for out to, all my all Hula my romance Gate. heads. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I was um not, I was so worried at the start of this puzzle. I think I looked to Daddy and Bill in a way of like, what have you done? <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Why have you chosen this? Well, it's a classic thing, which I feel like uh, uh, both times I've done this podcast before and. Escape rooms I've done with you guys. There's always a thing where it's like it's the periodic table. No, just kidding. It's just like anagrams. Yeah, like you know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. in this one where it's like you get confronted with the with the uh, uh, periodic table, which seems to be the first thing every trivia <laughs> head memorizes when they get into that world. Yeah. But then it's actually oh no, it's just like a kind of fun little word puzzle. Yeah, yeah. And like this is good, like a good thing to know for anybody who does an escape room. And it's mm. like if you're new to escape rooms, if you've never done one, like the first piece of advice is they don't. They don't think you know anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You are never required to know something. And if you are, you can leave knowing it was a bad escape room. Yeah, yeah. Like, the information is always in the room for you to get. There's exactly. Never, yeah. But because of that, that's a really good thing to know going in. One, because it makes you more confident, right? Like, you're great. I'm not yeah. going to not know the order of the presidents of the United States. So how am I ever <laughs> going to escape, right? So you know it's going to be possible. But it also makes you better because you see a periodic table and you look and you go, cool, I don't you know, I don't know. I know I don't need to know this, so I'm not going to waste any brain power yeah, trying thinking to look about at the chemistry atomic numbers. No, I mean, you have to look down, like, like, hang on, that doesn't follow. Yeah, you're <laughs> just like, there's no way they expect me to know that, so I'm not yeah. even going to try. Yeah, so I'm going to look symbol. for what yeah. they <laughs> can give me, and, and it makes you better at escape rooms to know that you don't need to know anything. Yeah, that's yeah. actually and, uh, some good the advice. other thing is yeah, with like musical puzzles where it's like part of a uh, a piece of music written out, yeah. and you're like, it's not going to want need you to know what notes these are and stuff like that. Written music, you think no one expects me to know how to read it's music. just a hatch that this puzzle is except when it's you make the a, actual puzzle it, exactly yeah the escape room for drummers with like the comedy show for drummers that was um yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah absolutely yeah. there's uh, a bald man yell <laughs> screaming at you the whole time throwing chairs. uh but yeah so so that it's actually it's really good advice for um yeah, I'll take it with me when I do uh, Cypher Room. Yeah, and, and it helps you convince people to do it. They'll be like, oh, I'm not smart enough to do an escape room. You're like, they're for dummies. Escape rooms yeah. are for idiots. <laughs> You'll have a great time in Cypher Room until you look over to be like, now look at the man playing Diablo 4. The, like, Where'd he go? Like, oh, he's no. the, oh, this is no. the first time he's left his house in years. I am. Um, room is broken. Uh, oh, I believe you know me <laughs> as I come into the Cypher Room. Still playing Diablo 4. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a what dummy up there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, uh, I, think, I think it was really... It was it was lovely to have you on. I think you did really well. I in the end, I really loved doing this room. Yeah. I, yeah. I think when I did the playtest, I was I was afraid it would feel like homework mm. because it was ninety percent homework. I felt yeah. I was that was where the cold sweat yeah. started. Right. But <laughs> it ends up being really quite nice. And like you know, the, these things once you get the hang of them, they they are little puzzles. Yeah. And it's a good example of like. Like it turns out, hey, if you're listening to the show, if you enjoy this show, but you weren't such a crack shot at chemistry in high school, you should have been. You just yeah. weren't paying attention. Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> go back and do real well because it's just little puzzles all the time. And I, and I will do a thousand of these balancing equation things before I do any one of that type of puzzle where it's a tile image. And when you press one of the tiles or the surrounding tiles, <laughs> flip, I am so 
bad at that. Like it's yeah. a visual learning thing that I cannot do. What I can do is look at numbers and be like, that doesn't equal that. <laughs> That's one of the classic mistakes that people make when they give people little like puzzles to do is yeah. giving someone a slide puzzle. You know, we have to slide the little cute oh, skirts yeah. on it. And they're puzzles. just like, That's a thing that people can do. No, it's no. not. Yeah, it's no, difficult. Difficult. Yeah. So hard like, to learn to do that. So hard. Yeah. So if you put those in like as a puzzle that you think people can do, it's like it's the same as giving people a Rubik's Cube. And you're like, yeah. For the first like 20 yeah. years, no one even thought a Rubik's Cube was possible. Yeah. Like, it was like it was a joke that you could solve Franklin a Rubik's Cube. Franklin Rubik was considered a madman. Yeah, he was like, I've invented an unsolvable cube. Yeah. Uh, the slide puzzles are the same. Like, yeah, like, those yeah. are, those no, are I'm terrible worst. at them, yeah. And one thing to finish off that I just want to say, back to a bit about the plot of this room. Mm. Um, Barry, you have a note written on uh, yours that was a question, and we answered it right away. But uh, on your map notes, there's a question written there. Who's Paul? Now, I told you right away who Paul was. He was a character from the previous room. <gasps> but he's actually 800 years old and he's he don't, he, only, he looks like a kid because he's stolen kid energy. Yeah. Oh. He's not a little man. He's a he's an old man yeah. who stole kid energy. That's why he passes as a kid so convincingly. He's Mr. Kid. He's Billy the Kid. Oh, my God. He's he Billy the from Kid the in Bible. This? He's Paul from the Bible and he's still around. <laughs> he's been an energy vampire for 2,000 years. We've got to walk behind him and go, Saul, and see if he turns around. What? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Is that what was you were going to say? That was, all, that was all I wanted you <laughs> to pick up on. He, wasn't he wasn't pretending to be a kid. He, he is basically uh, is a kid. Wow. Wow. Was this inspired at all by that weird billionaire guy who drinks his own son's blood? It wasn't bizarrely, <laughs> no. but okay. I am aware of that being a thing. That's yeah, so frightening. Yeah, yeah. I think he call, what does he call him? He has like a really derogatory name for his own son. Blood it's boy. Like, yeah, it's like blood, my blood, blood boy. boy. Yeah. Oh, blood boy. <laughs> uh, I heard about this like from the old legends of Catherine the Great. Did she steal the blood of children? Oh, that sort of thing. The answer is. No. Yes. No, she was well, just... Oh, well, do we maybe. know that for sure? Yeah, that's true. Who can I'm say? I no. bathe in, a, a, blood, thing in, to in do. a pool of blood of children, so... Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that's yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think I think that's that's it for our post show. So thank you, everybody, for listening to the show. I hope I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you again, Pat and Barry, for, for coming on and playing The Room. Thank that you so much for having us. It's a pleasure for us to do so. <laughs> yeah, truly. I've been so excited. I've been he- pestering Pat to be like, get us on. I want to do the <laughs> escape room pod. Uh, and for people who've listened to this and they're like, wow, that Pat and that Barry, ho, 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 love to hear their voices, love to hear more. Where can people find Block Blunders? Uh, well, uh, you can find Block Blunders on all the big podcast apps, Podcast Addict, Apple Podcasts, <laughs> uh, Spotify, of course. Yep. Spotify is probably where most of our listens come from. Um, podcast uh, Lad, uh, the Podcast Freaks, uh, Podcast Me Up, Scotty, uh, Podcast Me Down, uh, Sport. Google Podcasts. Sport. Uh, uh, and Google yes, Podcasts. And, and, of course, Google Podcasts. <laughs> um, and, uh, yes, you can follow us on Instagram at Block Blunders Pod. You do some good yes. social media. Yeah, we, we try post little those, clips yeah. and stuff like that. Um, I, I can't imagine if you've listened to this and you're interested in our podcast, definitely check out the episode of Terminator Two. Yes. No, Terminator One with uh, uh, Danny. Let, Silla, let's be fair; funny. there were bits of Terminator Two. It was two kind of a mix of Terminator One and Two. It was Danny attempting to create the Terminator plot out of whole cloth uh, based on her sort of vague recollections of what happens from pop uh, from pop culture and references and etc. She was very funny. Yeah. It was a very good episode. Yeah. Um, we've got lots of, uh, me and Barry are both in the world of Sydney comedians, so we have a lot of Sydney comedians guests on our show. They're all very funny. They all attempt to come up with the plots of films they barely uh, have never seen and barely know what they're about, and it's some very funny plots. Yeah. Sort of a Be Kind Rewind podcast, if you've ever seen that movie. <laughs> You go. And if you haven't seen that movie, call Come on our podcast Block and we'll say, I'm going to tell see you. See if you can plot. figure out the plot. If you're worried about spoilers, for the, some people t- tell me that they get worried about spoilers for movies that they like for these mm. great movies like The Godfather or something where they don't, they've always intended to watch it but never do. We don't get close enough for it to be a spoiler. Don't yes. worry. Like we it's had someone never... on for the Godfather, and he thought it was about a young boy making it as an olive sales person. Yeah, it, 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 so, things get ridiculous you know. and crazy, and we don't let out. We don't worry about our guests, like whether it's going to guess accurately or not. It's it's mostly about just having fun. Yeah, and if you want a guy who's trying to come up with a plot of Jaws, and all he knows is the line "We're going to need a bigger boat," so he just knows <laughs> that people at one point get a bigger boat, which they actually don't. Uh, <laughs> then you listen to that episode and listen. Yeah. To the there are some classic moments. That was a great episode. They're very good episode. Uh, so go and check it out. It comes with our look. This isn't just 
Because my brother ha- runs this podcast. Yes, it is. This is nepotism. Yeah. Well, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be here without that. No, yeah. it's also just a good show and you should go and listen to it. Nepotism aside. Mm. Uh, so there is nepotism, but it's also good. It's the Jamie Lee Curtis of podcasts. Um, I'm the Dave Franco. The Dave Franco. Yeah, that's the tagline. Oh, cool. So yeah. we're getting cancelled. Yeah, anyway. unfortunately, you're the James. Plot Blunders is the Dave Franco of uh, podcasts. Uh, <laughs> I would thank you everybody for listening. Uh, if you like the show and you want to help support us, I mean, first of all, leave a review. If you haven't left a review, it's nice. It's nice for us because we get to see a nice review and it's good for discoverability. But also tell a friend, tell someone you know, go to a party and be like, oh, can I put some tunes on? And then just play Escape the Podcast <laughs> instead. Uh, <laughs> and then lock up the whole, uh, the whole orc system. So Run away exactly. with the phone. Uh, and if you want to also support the show, uh, you can support us on Patreon. We don't run ads on the show, so Patreon is the, the biggest way to support the show. Anybody at any level can appear as an NPC in one of our rooms. Thank you so much, Devin Menifee. You did a good job. We made you evil. You are in, you, <laughs> most most of the NPCs do end up being quite. <laughs> evil. Yeah. Um, there's also bonus uh, audio content for all the five dollar donors. You can hear us solving a series of short, weird little mysteries that's been going on for hundreds of episodes. Uh, we do. You can listen to the playtest audio of me play testing the room and other fun bonuses and things like that. For our ten dollar donors, there's a monthly vlog, so you can see our faces. Ooh, are we going to match? What you think the image in your head when you listen to us? Probably not. <laughs> uh, and then there's trivia for the twenty dollars donors, lots of other fun stuff. So go and check it out. It's a it's a very lovely place to be. Go and also jump on the Discord. There's a link in the show notes. That's for everybody. You don't have to be a Patreon supporter. Just jump in the Discord and say hi mm. to all the other fans and to us. All right. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you. Uh, bye everybody. Bye. 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 bye.